what a wonderful God you are, what a beautiful name, what a beautiful character you have. And just as we open our hearts in praise and worship, Lord, we catch a glimpse of your greatness. And you are not distant, you come and you touch us. And you place your hand on us. And you bless us. And we thank you for your generous, loving, merciful heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Once in the in the Old Testament, actually, I shouldn't say that. I want to ask you if you know where this comes from. The Old Testament. <laughs> the Lord asked somebody. Uh, questions are very good, really, aren't they? The Lord asks somebody, "What have you got in your hand?" It wasn't a snake. To whom? First of all, to whom did the Lord say that? To, to what have you got in your hand? It was Moses, yes. It was a staff, yes. It was probably a crook, which then became, perhaps, later, a, a snake. But uh, the Lord asked Moses, what have you got in your hand? Yeah, what have you got in your hand? As if he didn't know, because he had something in his hand. But the Lord wanted to transform what was in his hand into something greater and as part of his purposes. And I just love that that sort of um, provocative thing. What have you got in your hand? What, what do you have in your hand? What have you got? What have you got that no one else has got that you can be such a blessing to those around you? What is it? What have you got in your hand? I believe the Lord wants to ask. And John, if you can just put up that short passage. Uh, Moses answered, uh, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, this is the one, what is that in your hand? A staff, that's probably a shepherd's crook. He replied, the Lord said, throw it on the ground. The Lord threw it on the ground and it became a snake. And the bold man of God that he was, he ran from it. <laughs> and then, oh, when there's a spider in the bathroom, my wife always asks me to come. <laughs> so I'm not allowed to run away from these things. <clears throat> But then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake and it turned back into a, a staff and in, in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the, Lord the, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. So what have you got in your hand? And it was just a simple question in a certain moment in history. But what was this moment in history? It was a people enslaved in Egypt, wasn't it? We remember the, the first uh, chapters of uh, Exodus. Uh, the Israelites, in chapter 2, verse uh, 23, the Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out. And their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. And God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant. And so that was the beginning of this great story of Exodus and of del deliverance. So the bigger picture was this, the people needing salvation and help from oppression and God was about to touch one man to be part of that and so remember when he came to the mountain Mount Horeb in chapter 3 the Lord appeared to him in a what? not a cloud? a, a burning bush yes a burning bush and, the, and Moses went nearer and, and, and realised there's something strange about that because it wasn't burning up it wasn't consuming and he realized it was the Lord and the Lord spoke to him and he was able to say here I am he named me which in Hebrew here I am and so the Lord said yes I've actually chosen you to go and be a part of this grander purpose bigger scheme and I want you to be part of going to set my people free and Moses said 
Yes, Lord. No, sorry, no, you didn't say that. You didn't quite say that, did you? No. You will be part of my schemes and I've got something that you can do and only you can do. And his reply was... Yeah, he got to even that point. He, he gave five excuses why he wasn't the man. Right? In chapter 3, verse uh, 11, he said, Well, who am I? Who, who am I to be used by you? Who am I? Have you ever said that? Well, who am I? Am I any good? Who am I? That was his uh, first excuse. And the Lord said, Well, I will be with you. I will be with you. That is no excuse. I will be with you. And then what did he say in verse 13? Well, who shall I say sent me? Second excuse. Who shall I say sent me? And the Lord replied, I am who I am. It's great. Something, something it's great that you know your Bibles. Yeah. You, you, get, you, you say, I am who I am sent you. Yahweh. This is the fundamental name revealed to Moses of the God of Israel. Yahweh. I am who I am. Or in some translations, I will be what I will be. In other words, as you walk with me, you will find me faithful. I will be what I will be. I am who I am. I, the God of the universe, will be with you. And third excuse was this one. <laughs> well, what if they don't believe me? What if they don't believe me? That's you, the great God of the universe, has sent me. And so the Lord says, what have you got in your hand? What have you got to your hand? Throw it down. And that will trans that I will use that and I will transform it to do wonders and glorious things that you cannot imagine. And it's pretty scary stuff that became a snake in that case. But it's just that power for God to transform that which is ordinary into something greater and more glorious for his, his purposes. So that was the third excuse. And the fifth one is, chapter 4, verse 10, I cannot speak. I am not eloquent. I babble. I stutter. And the Lord said, I will give you the words. Now go. And he still had one more excuse. Someone's over there. I just love the verse 13. Chapter 4, verse 13. First, first, chapter 4, verse 13 of Exodus. O oh Lord, please send someone else to do it. And I don't know if you are like me at times. Are you sure, Lord, that I can remotely do anything that you're asking me to do, oh Lord, please send someone else. And uh, what a man of God, eh? <laughs> and, and so the Lord replies, well, you just go. I'm giving you Aaron. You won't be alone. I'll give you a brother and he will speak for you. And eventually he went. So there were five excuses not to go. But I just love that third one. When the Lord says, what have you got in your hand? And I just believe the Lord wants to ask that of us. What have you got in your hand? And this is, yes, a healing service. And I thought, well, how is this going to re relate to a healing service? Well, actually, healing is when you give what God has given to you to others. That is part of the healing process. It's not just looking at all our issues and problems. And Moses had plenty. He was insecure. He could not talk properly. He was now, he was now elderly. Uh, first of before he, he, he kind of realized that God wanted to deliver his people, remember? And he took the law into his own hands, all cocksure and proud. He went and actually killed somebody. And so the Lord had to humble this man for 40 years in the desert. And now he is a very different man. He was not that cocksure, proud person, but a man even somewhat broken and, and just maybe insecure of himself. But maybe it was at that point that God could now trust him because he was not going to to rely on his own resources but he's going to rely to God he knew he could not do it in himself he knew he did not have the words he knew he did not have the power but it was at that point that he was ready and the Lord said I can use you and all you've got to do, do is give me what's in your hand so I, brothers and sisters I just what is in your hand it's different from what's in my hand and Moses is just a crook. It was the stuff that he was using to, to shepherd his sheep. It was the stuff, the ordinary stuff of life. And he couldn't even see if it was any good. And the Lord had to say, what have you got in your hand? It's a crook, a shepherd's crook. And I will use that. So what's in your hand? What is in your hand? What's within your reach? What's, what ability do you have? What gift 
do you have that you can use to bless others? What treasured possessions do you have in your hand? It could be so many things. I was looking at uh, Acts chapter 9. There was, a, there was a lady called Dorcas, Tabitha. I don't know if you remember that story. She, she died. And she was a wonderful woman. Her testimony is in the Bible. And it says, and she passed away and they called Peter to pray over her. And, and all the widows stood around her crying and uh, showing Peter the robes and other clothing Dorcas had made while she was with them. She used her sewing skills to bless others and the the Bible says she cared for the poor. What could she do? What was in her hand? What gifting did she have? It was actually sewing and making clothes and she did it and she gave it and it was used and the Lord blessed it and multiplied it so that when she passed away there was a gap. People knew she had passed away. Something special and precious had passed away. And To me that's just a precious picture something you have that no one else has that the Lord wants to just take if you will give it to him he wants to bless it and break it and multiply it that's what the Lord does doesn't he with the the loaves and the fishes and you think what's this I haven't got anything just a few loaves, a few fishes if you offer it to the Lord he will break it, he will multiply it and he will bless it so what is it, what do you have in your hand Is is it baking uh, we were, when we were in Rome we, um, we, we, we helped in a local after schools club, it wasn't run by Christians but we wanted to be there and, uh, and then sometimes there would be a bit of a, a party and we would just bring we just cook something, they, they, they weren't ready for the gospel or anything, but just to bring cakes um, English style cakes at Christmas, chocolate logs and things that Italians never heard of um, but just, just to bless just to bless with the simple things that we have uh, each other. Uh, someone sent me a picture. Actually, I'll, I'll be uh, an audience say who it is. It was well, Stephen Gendel, who's uh, head chaplain, and he's down in Cornwall. He sent a picture of an aeroplane over Cornwall in the blue skies of Cornwall. One of these kind of small uh, aeroplanes, private things. And there's a big banner at the back, which, which said, and he took a picture: "Jesus calls. Will you follow?" So along the beaches of all the holidaymakers or whatever. Gee, he, some guy had an aeroplane he said what can I do I've got an aeroplane what can I do I put a banner at the back and go along the coast that's what he did so it doesn't have to be rocket science or strange just get on your aeroplane this and go no. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it can be absolutely anything and I just want the, I just ask the Lord may the Lord speak to each one of you what is that that you have in your hand? It could be something unusual. It could be even, dare I say it, some aspect of suffering. Because the law can transform that, doesn't it? Remember what it says in 2 Corinthians 1? The comfort that you receive, you can comfort the other. You can comfort the others with the comfort that you have received in suffering. Sometimes it's even that. That difficult thing. Sometimes the most difficult thing. Lord, I give it to you. Would you somehow transform it? I don't know how you're going to do it. Would you transform it and, and break it open and let some glory shine through? What have you got? What have you got in your hand to offer the Lord? And as uh, off with the Bible, you, some say I'm too young. The Lord says, I won't say a rude word, rubbish. <laughs> some say I'm too old. Rubbish. Moses was probably about 80 at this point when he was eventually ready to do something new and glorious. Um, there's just a lovely, I just read a few weeks ago, just on this theme. Um, do you remember that little song, The Drummer Boy? Um, and I think Pentatonix has sang a beautiful rendition of it, a cappella. You know, what, what, what can I give to him? Can we sing the whole song? I don't think you want me to. <laughs> And uh, just imagine that drummer boy with the, with the wise men, and what, what can I give him? I've got nothing. And eventually, he realizes, I have no gifts to bring to lay before the king. Shall I play for him? That's all I've got is this drum. Then he smiled at me. He smiled at me. Me and my drum. So just play that. I, just, I love that song. Me and my drum. So you want to go and listen to that. 
So, that's the message. What, what have you got in your hand? And we're going to take communion shortly. And the first thing we actually have in our hand, the Lord puts it there. It's bread and it's wine because there's mercy. It's not like we're doing things for the Lord, forcing it. It's first of all just receiving his grace and his mercy. So first of all, what's in your hand? I will say, in Jesus' name, grace and mercy and bread and wine. And that's what we're going to receive. First of all, that's what you've got in your hand. Wonderful, wonderful. But then God puts something else in your hand. What is it? What's that crook? What's that thing that only you have that you can offer to God? And he will break it and multiply and bless it. What have you got in your hand? Let's just take a moment before God. each of our hearts, our situations, our circumstances, our joys, our gifts, our talents, our abilities, our possessions, our, and our hard things, our suffering. Lord, what are you saying to us this morning? That we have in our hands that you want us just to bring to you. that you would kiss with your grace that you would break it open and do something and make something glorious to extend your kingdom 